Hey everyone, it's Jake Clark from Fargo 3D Printing. Today what I'm going to be showing you is how to replace your nozzle as well as how to clear a thermal barrier tube clog in your MakerBot Smart Extruder. What we're going to do first is remove the door. How we do that is we open the door, lift up, and then we're going to actually pry the piece out and it should pop right out. Set that aside. After removing the door, we'll now remove the filament guide tube. Since we are using the Replicator Mini, we'll have to go to the software and select Load Filament. What this will do is it will actually heat the nozzle up to 215 degrees C. That way we'll be able to remove the nozzle from the Smart Extruder. Once the Smart Extruder is heated, we'll have to remove the filament. So simply on the right side of the Smart Extruder, press down on the spring lever, push down on the filament if you can, and pull out the filament. Once the filament is removed, we'll take a crescent wrench in our case and go to the nozzle. The nozzle should still be heated at 215. If the load filament script has ended, make sure you restart that and wait for it to heat up to 215 again. Once the smart extruder is heated up to 215, grab your crescent wrench and start turning on the nozzle. Now, there might be a little bit of resistance from the nozzle. Make sure that you hold the smart extruder to the gantry system with your other hand. Once you have it loose, unscrew it a couple more times with the crescent wrench. Now what you can do is cool down the nozzle. Once the smart extruder is cooled down, remove it from the gantry system and unscrew the nozzle. It should be safe to touch at this point. Once you unscrew the nozzle, check to see if the nozzle is clogged. If there's debris in the nozzle, set that aside. Look down the barrel of the smart extruder. If you see debris in the barrel, then you have a thermal barrier clog. In our case, we have both a nozzle and a thermal barrier clog. To unclog the thermal barrier tube, replace the smart extruder back onto the gantry system and select load filament. Wait for the smart extruder to reach 215 degrees C, then insert more filament. Once you've loaded the filament and it starts going into the smart extruder, you'll see that the thermal barrier clog will get removed. Make sure you hold the smart extruder to the gantry system while you put pressure on the filament, and then it should release. Here you see the first about eighth of an inch is the actual thermal barrier clog. The rest of it is just simply filament that has been slightly molten. What we'll do is we'll let that extrude for a couple inches and then we'll actually clip that off. Once we've clipped it off, we'll push down on the spring loaded lever and then we'll push down on the filament a little bit and pull it right back out. This will ensure that you have a clear thermal barrier tube. Once we're done with that, we'll cool down the smart extruder once again. Here you can see that the PLA is actually swollen on the right side due to the heat. This is what caused the PLA to actually stick to the walls of the thermal barrier tube, causing it to clog. So once it's cooled down, we'll take that off the gantry system again. And then if there's any sort of filament that got onto the threads, make sure we clean that off with a wire brush so that the threads are nice and clean. Once they're cleaned, we'll take our Fargo 3D printing nozzle and screw that by hand back into the smart extruder. Once you've tightened it by hand as far as you can go, take the wrench and tighten it just a little bit more until it's snug. Then we'll put it back onto the gantry system and select load filament. So once the nozzle has reached 215 degrees C, hold the smart extruder to the gantry system and then you'll want to take your crescent wrench and tighten the nozzle just a little bit more until it's snug again. If the nozzle is not tight enough, what's going to happen is you're going to actually have filament leak out around the nozzle. Once we have that on tight, then we can load our filament. Once you see filament coming through the nozzle, you can actually cancel out the load filament script and we'll put the door back onto the Mini in our case. To put the door back onto the Mini, what we'll do is we will slide the bottom into the slot and then we'll push back onto the top piece that'll snap it back into position. If you don't see any filament coming out of the nozzle, what you'll want to do next is go back into influence settings, go back into preheat settings, and bump that up to 260 degrees. Now you're not going to want to exceed 260 degrees.